Am I really a vampire? Be sure before you bite. Hello, Chapter. I can't wait for Frederick to eat you. It says, Table of Contents. Section 1 for the Novice Vampire. Section 2 for the Journeyman Vampires. Section 3 for Master Vampires. Hello, Table of Contents. You are also helpful. Frodrick, would you mind reading this for me? My crow's feet are sore. Sore my ear? All right, fine. In a nutshell, it says you can't enter homes without being invited in first. You also can't enter if they have holy symbols, garlic, red or white roses, or hawthorn branches on the entrance. Frodrick, would you do the honors? Uh, it says, in a nutshell, that vampires wear black cloth because it protects them from holy magic, uh, such as holy water, crosses, and the sun. Frodrick, do you mind reading this for me? It says, in a nutshell, that you can bite people on the neck and drain their blood till they pass out, but you should do it when no one will see you. anymore right now. It's too depressing. Maybe someday when I feel better about this, this whole thing. Stop. Am I really a vampire? Be sure before you bite. Have you been in Draxylvania for more than one day? Regrettably, yes. Have you craved blood even once? I like my steak rare. I'm French. Are you a child of the night? Starlet is never seen by day. Do you wear a ribbon around your neck to hide two fang-shaped wounds? It's the latest fashion in Paris. You passed the test. Mona, you are definitely a vampire. I passed. I did it. Wait. I am not a vampire. Tess are stupid, just like you. It's the mysterious Madame Stragoy. I don't want to pick that up. Was that your voice I heard in my head? Uh, yes, I, I have the ability to send messages to those who are, shall we say, sensitive to the supernatural. How did you know my name? I have been watching you two ever since Mona came to Draxylvania and was imprisoned by Shroudy in the castle. What goes on in Castle Varg interests me very much. But I don't want to bore you with all that right now. Watching us all the time, eh? Huh? Maybe you should change your name to the nosiest nosy person to ever stick a nose where it doesn't belong. You better be nice to me, Froderick. I know all about you and your troubles. I'm sure the Belfry boys would like to know that you have finally left the safety of the castle. Oh, well, what I meant to say was, you should be called the most forgiving forgiver who ever forgave things that should definitely be forgiven. That work for you? Forgiven. For now. Why have you summoned me here? I know your plight, and I know how best to prepare you for your journey home. Oh, good! What plight? Mona, she means your, you know, transformation into a, you know, V A M P I R E? V A M. Oh, vampire! <laughs> I am most definitely not a vampire. Fodrick is so silly. Really? You're not a vampire? Then how do you explain the sleeping by day in a coffin, no less, the drinking of blood and turning into a bat, eh? Explain that, smarty pants. I don't drink blood. Yuck. It's just... Yeah, yeah, I heard. Salty tasting Merlot. Listen, honey, I have news for you. Shroudy killed you, drained you of blood, fed you some of his blood, then brought you back to Castle Varg as a vampire. You better learn to accept that pretty quick. <laughs> there, there, no need to cry. I'm here to help you get back to Paris. 
As a vampire, you can live an extraordinary life, or unlife as it were. It will be wonderful, and just as fulfilling as a regular uh, life. Don't let it get you down, child. Just do what I say and you will be fine. Willie? Truly? Thank you for your kindness. I will listen. I'm all pointed ears. Tell me what I have to do. Hang on a second, Toots. We don't even know you. What is there to know? I am a gypsy fortune teller who looks after wavered vampires. Plus, anything I can do to annoy Baron Shroudy just brightens my day. See, Fortric? Nothing to worry about. She's just a good Samaritan, that is all. I don't know. I think the knower of all things knows some things she doesn't want us to know. Relax, Froderick. I feel bad for Mona. It isn't her fault what happened to her. I just want to help the poor girl out. What is up with the creepy music? I tried playing country music for a while, but it just didn't seem to work. The sun burns my skin, my best friend's bat. The mirror shows me nothing, I smell like a rat. Oh, I'm just a vampire girl. When the moon comes up, I wake with the start. I'm feeling so sad, like I got a stake in my heart. Oh, I'm just a vampire girl. Now that is scary. Do you want to hear the verse where her carriage breaks down and her dog runs away? No! Uh, no thank you! Fine, suit yourself. I'm easy. You seem to know so much about us. How is that possible? I'm afraid that is a very long story. Well, lady, we have nothing better to do, so shoot. The story begins many, many, many... Many years ago. On second thought, lady, I have bad circulation problems and can't sit for long stretches of time. I was born in Romania in 1829. My mother was a famous gypsy fortune teller, renowned throughout the land for her mystical arts and crafts. Crafts? Yes. My mother used to make these cute little paper mache cat figures, only it was cats doing human things. You know, cats driving a wagon, cats plowing the field, cats being burned at the stake. Always good for a laugh. Yes. Well, never mind the crafts. It's the mystical arts that concern your story. Story. As I grew older, my mother began to instruct me in the ways of magic, but her knowledge was limited, and as I grew older, my hunger for power increased. Soon I sought out others beyond my mother to teach me what they could. In time, I grew far more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Did you know that with great power comes great responsibility? And usually some colorful tights. Frodrick! Stifle! Please continue. Soon I realized that I had reached the limit of what mere mortals could teach me. My skills could only be increased by looking beyond this world. I began to research the world of supernatural beings, demons, werewolves, mummies, and of course, vampires. How did you find this information? Let's just say I happened to find a lot of like-minded people and we uh, exchanged information. My power and knowledge grew quite a bit while I was associating with these people. Gee, you don't say. I do say. But. I got more than I bargained for. My desire for power made me do things I didn't realize I was capable of doing. Oh my! If you don't mind me asking, what sort of things? I am ashamed to admit it, but I acquired this arcane knowledge in less than honest ways. I get it. The five-finger discount. You know. It would only take me two fingers to place a curse on you that would last five generations. Yeah? Well, it would only take one finger for me to tell you what I think of you and your curses. Oh, Frederick, stop it! She's being honest with us. Don't antagonize her. Please go on, Madame Strigoi. Thank you, sweetheart. 
There isn't much more to say. I have led a life of foul deeds and shame, and now in my waning years, I have made it my sole purpose in life to undo any evil I have done, correct my wanton mistakes, and in general try and set wrongs to right. Tonight, I will correct the wrong that has been done to you by getting you on the path home to Paris. <laughs> <laughs>